the most important play in the canon of Shakespeare is Hamlet. And it is believed to be the masterpiece of Shakespeare. And it was first performed in 1602. And it was published in 1603. Actually, Shakespeare might have taken the source for Hamlet from various areas. For example, he had taken the story from a Danish writer named Saxo Grammaticus. And Grammaticus produced a book called Historica Danica. And it was published in 1514. And in this book, Hamlet is called Amleta. And his mother, Gertrude, is called Jerutha. And the same story of Hamlet can be found in Saxo Grammaticus's book called Historica Danica. And Shakespeare might have borrowed the story from Historica Danica. And there is also a prose work by a French writer, Bella Forest. And it is entitled the Historic Tragicus. History is tragic use. And the story of Hamlet is also there, included in the translated work by Bella Forest. And the third source is seemingly the most important source. It's actually taken from Thomas Kidd's book called Hamlet. And uh, since Shakespeare produced Hamlet, the book written by Thomas Kidd is considered as your Hamlet or the old Hamlet. And these are the three main sources for Shakespeare for the play Hamlet. And uh, when we come to find the, the story of Hamlet, we find that on a dark winter night, the ghost of Hamlet's father, old Hamlet, appears before two watchmen. And then the ghost is seen by Horatio, a very close philosopher friend of Hamlet. So the ghost of old Hamlet was seen by the watch there. And they were named Marcellus and Bernardo. The ghost was first seen by the night gods of the castle named Marcellus and Bernardo. And they intimate about the ghost to Horatio, the friend of Hamlet. And Horatio also saw the ghost. And after all, Horatio intimated Hamlet to come and see the ghost. Therefore, on the next day, Hamlet comes and meets the ghost. And uh, the ghost speaks with uh, Hamlet, takes the Hamlet separately and speaks with the Hamlet. And the ghost actually tells how he was killed by Claudius. Old Hamlet was actually killed by Claudius. And he wanted Hamlet to take revenge upon his murder. So he wanted his son Hamlet to take revenge upon his murderer. And uh, Hamlet could not believe uh, the words of the ghost. And uh, Hamlet, being a contemplative person, enters into a deep melancholy and even apparent madness also. And Claudius and uh, Jatrius engage two of Hamlet's friends, named Rosengrads and Gildor Steele, to identify the cause of Hamlet's erratic behavior. Hamlet started behaving in a wrong manner. And therefore, they engage Rosengrads and Gildersen to identify the cause of Hamlet's erratic behavior. And it was at the time the Chamberlain, Lord Chamberlain named Polonius, suggests that Hamlet may be mad because of love for his daughter Ophelia. And Hamlet was in love with uh, Polonius' daughter, Ophelia. And Polonius believes that Hamlet has been behaving in a mad manner because of his love with uh, Ophelia. 
But Hamlet is not mad because of his love for Ophelia. It is the actual thing. Hamlet has been told by the ghost that he was killed by Claudius and Jetrius. And as the old man was laying on the lap of his wife, Claudius poured a poison into his ear. Actually, it was the poison made out of cursed hebona. So he poured uh, the poison called hebona into the ear of Hamlet and old Hamlet became dead. And they spread the news that Hamlet was bitten by a poisonous snake. Actually, they killed Hamlet by pouring a poison into his ear and he became dead. But they spread the news that uh, old Hamlet was killed by a poisonous snake. And uh, the ghost of old Hamlet told Hamlet. So the details about the murder made by Claudius and Jetrius. And Cam Hamlet has become confused with the idea. So as he is a contemplative man, he thinks what can be done in the context. And his mother, Gertrude, has got married with Claudius within a very short time, say, before the end of one month after the death of old Hamlet, the mother of Hamlet got married with Claudius. And at the time, Hamlet was 30 years old. And he had studied at the University of Wittenberg in Germany. And he had returned to his house on learning about the death of his father. And now he has been intimated by the ghost of his father that uh, his father was murdered by Claudius and Jacques. And Hamlet could not believe uh, the words of the ghost. And it was actually the confusion in his mind. And he was asked to take revenge on the murder. But so he wanted to clarify whether the murder was done by Claudius and Jetrius. And in fact, he could not revenge. And uh, it made him undergo a period of procrastination, delay in executing the revenge. And it was at the time there appeared a group of strolling players with a plan of performing a play at the castle of Elsino. So the group of actors reached the place. And Polonius introduced the actors to Hamlet. And Hamlet devised a plan to present a scene closely resembling the sequence by which uh, old Hamlet was murdered by Claudius and Jeffreyus. And he devised a plan to present uh, a scene specifically resembling with the sequence by which his father was killed. And the players are there, in fact, to play a drama entitled uh, The Murder of Gonzago. And Hamlet devises a plan to fix a mouse trap. And this is called uh, the mouse trap. So Hamlet says that he will fix a mouse trap by devising a scene where the old Gonzago is murdered by pouring poison into his ear. And the, the players agreed to perform that scene also. And Mac Hamlet actually wanted to fix a mouse trap there. And he hopes that when the scene will be produced, Claudius will react. And uh, the, the play was performed before the audience. And uh, when the moment of the murder arrived, uh, Claudius jumped up from his seat and left to the room. And Hamlet was sure that uh, Claudius was uh, struck by his prick of conscience. And it was this reason why he went away from the place. And uh, Hamlet followed him and found him praying. And he thought of killing the man, but if he would kill Claudius, his soul would reach heaven. 
because he was at the time praying. If a man is killed when he is in the prayer, his soul will surely reach the heaven. And the Hamlet's father, while coming as a ghost, told him that he could not reach heaven. So he was wandering in the hell and that he could not reach heaven. He was wandering in the purgatory, waiting for the moment to reach heaven. And he could reach heaven only if the, the murderers are revenged. And in the case of Claudius, now he is found praying. And if he is killed, his soul will reach heaven. Therefore, Hamlet decided not to kill Claudius then. And he actually wanted to speak with his mother. And it is very popularly called the closet scene. And he goes to meet his mother to put daggers in his speech. To put daggers. It is called to put daggers in the speech. And he wanted to speak with his mother and thereby, thereby so to accuse her of the murder. And with that intention, he went to meet his mother. And as he was uh, speaking with his mother, he found some movements behind the curtain. And he thought that perhaps uh, Claudius might be hiding behind the curtain. So he stabbed the person and uh, the person behind the screen fell down ditch and it was identified that it was Polonius. Polonius was actually hiding behind the curtain. And when my Hamlet started speaking with his mother in a rash tone, he cried loud to help uh, the queen. And Hamlet killed uh, Polonius. And for killing Polonius, Hamlet must be put in the jail. Therefore, Claudius devised a plan and asked Hamlet to escape from the place and to reach England. So it was a technique adopted by him. So he showed interest in Hamlet and promised that he would help Hamlet from the murder if Hamlet would leave the place and reach England. And Rosengrads and Gilderstein were also asked to accompany Hamlet in his journey to England. And Claudius gave a letter to Rosengrads and Gilderstone to be handed over to the English king. And Hamlet went away with uh, Rosengrads and Gilderstone. And on their journey, Hamlet identified the letter and read it and found that it was a letter asking the English king to kill Hamlet. And Hamlet changed the letter. And uh, he wanted the English king to kill Rosengrads and Gilderstone. And Hamlet escaped from the ship and uh, reached uh, Denmark. And by the time, there were many other things taking place in Denmark. Ophelia, the lover of uh, Hamlet, became mad when she learned about the murder of her father. When she learned about the murder of her father, she became mad. And so especially when she learned that she, Polonius was killed by Hamlet. So she became mad and she wanted to commit suicide. And uh, she jumped into the water and became dead. And when Michael, Hamlet returned to Denmark, he found the grave diggers digging grave for Ophelia. And there was an interesting scene in which uh, Hamlet is found conversing with the grave diggers. And the grave diggers, while digging the grave, found a skeleton, the laughing face of a man. And they remarked that it was the, the face of an old jester who was there with the uh, old Hamlet. And uh, so Polonius, the brother of Ophelia, so Liartes, not Polonius, Liartes, the brother of Ophelia, wanted to take revenge on Hamlet. And Claudius invigorated, inspired him to kill Hamlet and uh, offered to conduct a duel also. And for the duel, Cla Liartes was given poisoned sword. 
and also at the same time he arranged a goblet a glass of wine with the poison mixed in it and uh, the plan of claudius was that if hamlet would win in the duel he must be given the poison to drink and thereby to kill him and in the first round of the duel hamlet won success and uh, liartes became wounded slightly and when the first round over the swords are to be exchanged the sword used by liartes is handed over to hamlet and at the time claudius offered him the drink but hamlet refused to drink and suddenly jetrude drank the liquor the wine and she fell down ditch so it was poison it was identified that it was poisoned wine and again the second round of the duel started and this time hamlet gave uh, liartes a good uh, beating and uh, liartes was wounded and so it was poisoned blood now hamlet was using and liartes was about to be dead and then liartes told hamlet that the blood was poisoned so that hamlet would also be dead because he had also hit hamlet with the sword and hamlet was also to be dead and the murders take place one after the other liartes fell down dead and hamlet before his death uh, wanted to kill claudius and uh, so he had a uh, stabbed claudius and uh, made him drink the remaining portion of the poisoned wine also and claudius also became dead and hamlet also fell down dead only horatio was left there and when the murder over when all the murder over there appeared the norwegian prince he came there in fact to conquer denmark and after all when he came there there was horatio to tell him about the things that happened there and he ordered for a honorable burial to be given to hamlet and this is what we come to find in the play hamlet and when we read the the area we come to find so on a dark winter night the ghost of hamlet's father appears before two watchmen and the watchmen are called the marcellus and bernardo and then seen by horatio the philosopher friend of hamlet and they bring hamlet and the ghost tells hamlet that he was killed by claudius and he wants hamlet to take revenge upon his murderer and as hamlet is a contemplative person he enters into a deep melancholy and even apparent madness and claudius and jetrude would engage two of hamlet's friends rosencrantz and guildenstern to identify the cause of hamlet's erratic behavior but polonius the lord chamberlain suggests that hamlet may be mad with love for his daughter ophelia but hamlet is not mad because of his love for ophelia and later in the play we find hamlet asking her to enter a nunnery and this is called the nunnery scene and this scene is popularly called the nunnery scene so in this scene nunnery scene takes place in act 3 scene 5 and in the nunnery scene he wants sophia to go to some nunnery that she doesn't like to get married and he says that he will ban marriage if he will become the king and after all a group of traveling actors come to elsinore by the time and they wanted to play a drama called the murder of gonzago and the play inside the play is the murder of gonzago and when the actors reach the place hamlet communicates with them and devises a plan to present a scene closely resembling the sequence by which hamlet imagines his uncle to have murdered his father and he hopes that if claudius is guilty he will react and when the moment of the murder arrives in the theater claudius leaps up and leaves the room and hamlet 
And Horatio agreed that this proves his guilt. And Hamlet goes to kill Claudius, but finds him praying. Hamlet thinks that killing in prayer will let him go to paradise. If he is killed when he is in prayer, it will help him reach heaven. In fact, Hamlet is forced to wait. And he goes to confront his mother then. And Polonius was already hiding behind the curtain. And hearing a noise from behind the curtain, Hamlet stabs the person behind. And Polonius became dead. For this crime, Hamlet is dispatched to England with Rosengrads and Gilderstein. And in the afternoon of her father's death, Ophelia goes mad and drowns herself in a river. And on learning the murder of his father, and the death of his sister, Liartes returns to Denmark. And Claudius enrages Liartes to fight with the Hamlet using a poisoned blight. And Claudius also arranges a poisoned goblet to be given to Hamlet should he succeed in the fight. If he succeeded in the fight, he should be given the poisoned goblet. And during the sword fight, Hamlet scores the fist, but declines the king's profit of goblet. And he scores the fist, but declines the, the drink offered by the king. Instead, Jetru drinks the goblet and becomes killed. And Liartes succeeds in wounding Hamlet, but he does not die of poison immediately. And he kills Liartes with his own poisoned blood. And Hamlet then kills Claudius with the poisoned blade and makes him drink the rest of the poisoned wine. And Hamlet also falls down dead. A Norwegian prince named Fortune Press engages with his ambassadors who report that Rosengrads and Gilderstein are also dead. And it is at the title given for a play written by Tom Shepard. Rosengrads and Gilderstein are dead. So the death of Rosengrads and Gilderstein intimated to the people. And Fortinbras, the Norwegian prince, stunned to find the whole noble family lying dead on the floor. And Horatio tells Fortinbras the story of Hamlet. And he then orders that Hamlet be carried away in a manner befitting a soldier and must be given a respectable burial. And there are a number of other things also that we have to remember. So Denmark was a Protestant country at the time the play was enacted. And there is also a reference to a mouse trap. Actually, the mouse trap referred to in the play is the scene devised by Hamlet to present the murder of his own father. He devised a scene to be added in the play inside the play to show the murder that occurred in his own castle, the murder of his father. And I told you, Claudius and Jatri would kill the old Hamlet by pouring curse the Hebona into his ear. And after all, there is also an interesting scene in the play where we come to find Polonius sending his son Liartes to study in Paris. And at the time, he engages a servant also to spy on his son. And the servant engaged is named Reynaldo. And actually, the Final scene presents a Norwegian prince named Fortin Brand coming to conquer Denmark. Formerly, his father was killed by old Hamlet. Therefore, the Norwegian prince wanted to take revenge on Denmark. But Claudius wrote a letter to the, the prince of Norwegia that old Hamlet is dead and uh, so Claudius is the ruler now, and there is nothing enmityical between them. But it is not taken seriously by the 
Norwegian prince and he comes to take revenge and finds all the people dead and and after all he orders for the honorable burial of uh, Amalek. And there are very popular scenes in the play. For example, the play within the play or the performance of Mother of Ginsago takes place in Act 3, Scene 2. And the grave digger scene is a scene offering comic relief. And it takes place in Act 5, Scene 1. And the castle is called Elsinore Castle in Denmark. And the other important things about the play is that Hamlet is the longest play as well as the most discussed one. And T.S. Eliot called the play the monodis of literature. And it is a play written in the Senecan format, a Senecan tragedy, dealing with the theme of revenge. And here in the play, the hero is not at all a man of action. And Hamlet is actually a young philosopher given to deep reflection and contemplation. And this is the reason why there are many number of soliloquies in the play. And Eliot in his essay, Hamlet and its problems, throws a virtual bombshell by calling the play an artistic failure. T.S. Eliot regarded the play as an artistic failure. And his main complaint is that the play lacked the objective correlative. So that there is no objective correlative. So the objectives are not correlated. There is no interconnection between the objectives there. And it is this reason why Eliot regarded the play as an artistic failure. And Dr. Tilliard, one of the important editors of Shakespeare, labels this play not as a tragedy, but a problem play. And even Bernard Shaw, noted for his allergy to Shakespeare, could not resist the compelling fascination of Hamlet. And he mentions the play as his toys for a world class series. And very interestingly, Haslich referred to the play as, it is we who are Hamlet. And it was the remark made by Haslich. According to him, we feel not only Hamlet's virtues, when we watch the play, we not only feel Hamlet's virtues, but also his weakness as our own. And Coleridge about Hamlet maintained the opinion that I have a smack of Hamlet myself. And C.S. Lewis very interestingly said that we read Hamlet's speeches with interest, chiefly because they describe so well a certain spiritual region through which most of us have passed. So we actually read the speeches of Hamlet with more interest because they describe a certain spiritual region through which all of us have passed. And in the play Hamlet, we come to find him coming in every scene in a new role. In the opening scene, we find him speaking in riddles speaking like uh, a little more than kin and less than kin. And his mother's conduct forces him to say the very popular speech, frailty thy name is woman. And then the confused mind of uh, Hamlet makes him say the popular speech, to be or not to be is the question. To kill or not to kill, to take revenge or not to take revenge. And it seems to be the, the major question. And one interesting thing about uh, the murder of Gonzago is a reference they given to Hecuba. So in the murder of Gonzago, there has been a, a character playing the role of Hecuba. Hecuba is actually the, the wife of Priam. And the mother of Hector, Cassandra, Paris, and Troilus. And Hecuba seems to be a very sincere wife to Priam. And when she learns that Priam is dead, she could not control herself. And Hamlet makes a comparison between Hecuba and Jephthah. His mother Jephthah doesn't feel seriously on the death of her husband. 
without observing the period of mourning, she got married with Claudius within a month. And Hecuba, the, the wife of Priam, is a very different lady. And she is found mourning on the death of her husband, Hecuba. And in the play, The Murder of Gunzagu, there has been a character playing the role of Hecuba. And very interestingly, Hamlet remarks, Hecuba or no Hecuba, the player has been so very interesting playing the role of Hecuba. And it is called Hecuba or no Hecuba. What is Hecuba to give or he to Hecuba? It's the popular space. And the Shakespeare is interested in telling the story of Hecuba. So he played and he is following the life of Lucretia. So there are references to the Hecuba story. In Hamlet also, we have to find the story of Hecuba. And he played Royalist and Gradita, and in his poem, Life of Lucretia, so there are references to Hecuba. And in this play also, so in Titus and Polygus, and in Kurgulonis, 